Hello everyone and welcome back to my Family Warriors 3 Health Let's Play. The last time I just watched cutscenes, talked to everyone, watched supports, but as you can see, sadly for you, there are even more supports now because I did all the training and the activities, as uh, I usually do. So, we still have more stuff to watch, but still, it won't take up the entire episode, I hope. <laughs> I mean, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Looking at it, this is always like it, like it hits you in the face, like damn. That's just a lot of supports, man, but I think it's okay. And um, yeah, anyway, today's gonna be Holtz's his episode, uh, whenever we get to the paralogue. But first we gotta go through all these. <laughs> Look at all that locked stuff, man. All the locks. Hey, hey, still alive? Nah. I think it'd be pretty obvious if I wasn't, but yes, I'm back and all in one piece. Well, that's a relief. However, I noticed your approach to battle hasn't changed one bit. Why would it? You still charge to the front and dive right into the thick of it. I was trying to be careful, but I guess it didn't really work. Well, you are some kind of master soldier, right? I'm starting to think you might not get yourself killed after all. Huh, so now you approve of my approach? Why the change of heart? I realized that taking the lead and fighting at the front is exactly what my brother does. True, and they say Holst is the bravest commander in all of Leicester. Usually the commanders stay in the back so they can see the whole battlefield and give orders. But not my brother. Honestly, he can't stand being back there. He has to be leading the charge. That's why I used to worry myself sick every time he went off to battle. But at some point, I'm not sure when, I became convinced that my brother would never die. What made you think that? I'm not sure. But it's not like there's anyone out there who can beat him, right? I know, right? He is definitely OP. When I realized that, it just seemed like a waste of time to worry about him so much. If anything, you should be pitying the chumps on the other side. Indeed. Precisely. And then I realized, it's the same with you. You're just like my brother. <laughs> it's an honor to be put in the same category as Holst. Now I know I'm wasting my time worrying about you. And it's not like I can stop you anyway. I actually hope you keep doing what you do so I can take it easy in the back. That's the plan. But I'm pretty sure I've seen you fighting up front with me recently. You even seem to be enjoying yourself. Me? Enjoying myself? <laughs> Please. If I'm fighting at the front, it's because I have no other choice. The whole time I'm fighting, I'm wishing I could be cheering everyone on from the sidelines instead. You know, yelling stuff like, Smash them good! And, yeah, use those muscles! That would really inspire our troops, right? And remember, this is me we're talking about. <laughs> Nah. I don't know. I think all that yelling would only annoy some people. Oof. That's a big oof. Uh, you obviously haven't experienced my phenomenal cheering skills firsthand. Next time, I'll cheer for you too. You'll see how inspiring it can be. All right, sounds good. I'll keep an ear out. Also, Hilda, you're like basically this close to becoming a dance you the dancer unit. I mean. The thing is, like for all the like older units I've used in other playthroughs, like I've gone like to give everyone just the dancer class when they're training. So uh, yeah, I feel like <laughs> Hilda's just she's she's just provoking it. She just wants to become a dancer unit. That's a tasty looking roast you've got there, Claude. Where'd you get it? Damn. Oh, hey, Raphael. I nabbed it from the base we took over the other day. No big deal. Plus, it's about to go bad, so there's no point in trying to ration it out to the troops. Meaning? You're giving it to me. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Hold on there, big guy. Nobody can eat all of this alone. Not even you. You sure about that? I was actually thinking we could all feast on it together. Want to help me cook it? Oh yes, let him cook. You bet I do. 
Might mean my stomach goes a little emptier, but feasting with the whole team adds a spice like no other. No. Just leave the rest to me. I'll kick this meat party off in style. Hey, make sure you take it to the mess hall. Is he even listening to me? Nope. Wow, this looks incredible. Color me impressed, Raphael. Well, you said it was about to go bad, right? I had to grill it up as quick as I could. I mean, it wasn't going bad in a matter of minutes, but this is a huge help. Thanks. Weird. It felt like that was more than we could ever finish. But just mention food to the crew and it's gone in an instant. Too bad, too. I was thinking I could split any leftovers we had with Maya and my grandpa. Uh, doesn't it take days to get here from where they are? It would definitely have started rotting by then. Besides, this isn't really the chapter in history you want an old man and a child going out for a stroll. Yeah, I guess you're right. Still, I hope that day comes soon. Huh? A time where we can invite your grandfather and sister over for banquets whenever we want. A time when it's not so dangerous for them to travel. Not that any of that'll be possible so long as this war keeps dragging on. That's it, Claude! That's it! Whoa, what's all the yelling for? This meal was amazing, yeah. But a little voice in the back of my mind kept saying something was missing. And now I know what it is! Once the land's at peace again, we're gonna have to have a huge party! With Maya, and my grandpa, and everyone! After all, you can't savor a meal if you've got thoughts of war rolling around in your head. Yeah, I think you're right. A banquet we can throw in peacetime is far better than one we have to put on hold due to the conflict. But in order to make that dream a reality, we'll need to create a future where the wild animals share their game instead of fighting over it. Game? As in game meat? You have more? Sorry, just a metaphor for the eagles and lions, always at each other's throats. As for us deer, we're content with leaves. But where should we forage next? Hmm, good question, Claude. Also, he being all like cryptic with his met metaphors and stuff, but it's okay, Claude. I see you. I, I know what you're all about. <laughs> I know what you are. <laughs> hey, Lysithia, you have a minute? There's something I need to talk to you about. Fine, you can have one minute. I might not look it, but I'm actually pretty busy here. Don't I know it? I can't remember the last time I saw you take a break. Anyway, I'll keep it quick. It's about what happened in our last fight. Charging in headfirst like that isn't like you, Lysithia. And not in a good way. And what, in your expert opinion, makes it so unlike me? All I did was end the battle in the quickest, most efficient way possible. Which in turn kept damages to a minimum. If anything, you should be thanking me. It worked this time, sure. But there was a good chance it could have failed, too. You shouldn't leave things up to fate like that. If things hadn't gone your way, you could have lost your entire unit. You and your soldiers alike would be at the feet of the goddess right now. My point is, you need to make decisions based on strategy, not chance. And I thought someone as smart as you would understand that. Yes, yes. That's enough lectures for today. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. But had my unit not rushed in, the battle would have dragged on for far too long. The fighting would have surely raged into the next day. We would have had to revisit our tactics entirely if the enemy changed formations at daybreak. And if things had gone south from there, it could have taken us more days further to finish the battle. I won't insist I made the right decision, but don't imply I didn't consider the possibilities. I was always fully aware that we could fail. But failure didn't even have to be an option. Sure, the battle dragging on would have had an impact on the war at large. But so what? In the grand scheme of things, your life is far, far more valuable than a few measly days of combat. Please, Lysithia, I need you to promise me you won't put yourself in danger like that again. I'm sorry. I can't do that. You know, it's not just your own life you're rolling the dice with. Every single soldier you command would die with pride by your work. So... You're saying I fail as a leader. Yes, maybe I do. Well, feel free to remove me from my post if you don't think I should be commanding troops. That's wholly within your right. Do what you will. <sighs> Until then, I'm going to do what I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. 
Sheesh. I don't know what's up with her, but I can't help if she's gonna be that stubborn about it. Either way, it doesn't seem like she's changing tunes anytime soon. I guess I'll just have to do what I can to keep her safe in the meantime. Damn. Claude just can't get those W's, man. <laughs> He's just struggling with this guys. Oh man. Oh, I did I didn't realize I had that many supports with Hilda unlocked. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe this is gonna take an episode. How are you feeling, Raphael? That's... Everything healing up? That's my bad. Hey Hilda. Yeah, I'm fine. This is nothing. Well, that's good to hear. Still, don't go pushing yourself too hard, okay? You know it. Thanks for looking out for me. You really were incredible out there today, you know? I mean, even if you did get sort of reckless at times. It kind of reminded me of my brother, actually. What? Holst? Well, I sure appreciate you saying so, but I'm nothing compared to that guy. He's strong as an ox, a master of every single weapon, and has muscles bulging out of his other muscles. His workout routine must be the stuff of legend. I'd give anything to be like him. Yeah, he trains literally all the time. It's no surprise that two of you get along like a house on fire. I also appreciate how much he values his family. Yeah, because I sure don't. Oh, don't say that. He's just being a good big brother who's looking out for his little sis. In fact, the last time we met up, we had a great time swapping stories about our sisters. Wait, so you are talking about me? Oh, I really hope he didn't say anything weird. <laughs> Poor Hilda. It wasn't weird at all. We were just chatting about how cute our sisters look when they sleep. See, when she was little, my sis couldn't fall asleep unless I tucked her in. And we had a nice chat. And at some point, while we were talking, whoosh, out like a candle. It was adorable. Then Holes told stories about when you were little. Said you whined a lot. Stop, stop, stop! I'm not interested in stories about myself, and especially not stories like that. <laughs> this is all unbelievably embarrassing, so let's just bury the whole conversation in the world's deepest hole and pretend it never happened. It's not embarrassing. It's nice. Anyway, I eventually told Holst how sad and lonely I was to be living apart from my sister now. And he said he's sad he never gets to work with you, even though you're in the same army. And we ended the conversation by promising to always keep our sisters safe, no matter what. You promised each other? Oh, I swear my brother is always like this. What if he gets even more overprotective now that he has you for a big brother buddy? Holst is overprotective? Oh, huh. I never got that impression. Well, he's better than he used to be. I mean, at least I don't have to send him constant letters now. Still, according to what Balti told me, Holst apparently said, and I quote, I will be the one to decide if her future husband is good enough. <laughs> That's so funny. My sister's gonna call the shots on who I marry, too. She told me so. <laughs> wow. Our situations could not be more different. <laughs> Poor Hilda. She's just... She just wants a break. But her brother's like, no. I just tell everyone embarrassing stories about you because yes. I know you're a clever girl, Hilda, and you just had some bad luck this time. But even if you delegate the job to another, the ultimate responsibility still lies with you, so you need to be careful. I know. I'm sorry. Then take that responsibility and finish this. Though this much is going to be difficult alone. Ah, Marianne. Come here. Of course. What do you need? I want you to help Hilda. Um, alright. I can do that. Thank you. Now get to it, you two. Boy, you really blew it this time, Hilda. This isn't like you at all. Sorry you got dragged into this, Marianne. No, it's alright. So, um... What should I do? Could I ask you to organize all the weapons and armor here by type? I'm going to start with separating the useful stuff from the broken stuff. I was apparently supposed to put each category of item into a different box and take them all to storage. But the message got lost somewhere along the way, which is why everything's now in this giant pile. I understand. How are you?
are you doing over there, Maria? What the... This is even worse than before! Um, yes, I'm sorry. I tried to be very specific with how I separated things, but it got a bit out of hand. Hilda, Marianne? I'm coming to check on your progress, and I had better be impressed. Oh, shoot! She's coming! Quick, shove all of this stuff under a rug or something! Hmm... Ladies, correct me if my eyes are mistaken, but this is in even worse shape than when I first left. Um... I... I'm sorry, Judith. It's all my fault. I, I had everything arranged just like you wanted, but then, whoops, I tripped and crashed into the pile and everything sort of went everywhere. <laughs> I see. Hilda, when I told you to take responsibility for your tasks, I didn't mean you had to burden yourself with absolutely everything. Right, got it. I'll definitely be more careful. <clears throat> Well, why don't the two of you take a short break? This mess clearly isn't going anywhere. I'm so sorry, Hilda. This is all my fault. Eh, don't worry about it. I mean, it's actually my fault in the first place, you know? Come on, let's go take that break. I need a cup of tea in a bad way. All right. Thank you, Hilda. Oh. They're the best of friends, but they make each other worse. <laughs> but that's cute. It's cute. Anyone here? Oh, Hilda! Perfect! I am, aren't I? Now, what do you need? I was thinking about getting another round of practice in, but I need a partner. And here you stand. So what do you say? What? But it's so late! Yes. But, I just thought up a fantastic move, and I need to try it out or I'll never be able to sleep. Yeah, but I've already bathed, and I really don't want to get all sweaty and gross again. <laughs> Wait, is that you? You smell amazing. I know! I use floral oils. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I mix and match based on the situation or just, you know, mood. Wow, that's impressive. I bet you're wondering why I go to all that trouble, right? Well, scent is very important. One whiff of something nice can turn a person's entire day around. I get that, but I don't really think it's for me. I'm always training or hunting or something, and the constant sweat would probably wash it right off. Which is exactly why you should use floral scents. Then you'll smell like a delightful bouquet and not some kind of hog farmer. I mean, you're cute already, but you could be the whole package if you just leaned into it. You think I'm... cute? No one's ever said that to me before. Or anything even remotely like it, actually. You know what? Let's just do it! Come to my tent. That's where I keep the stash. I really don't think this is for me. Oh, don't be silly. It is absolutely for you. No, really. Besides, I have to go practice that move. Well, too bad. But I'll come find you tomorrow, okay? Oh, this is so exciting! Wait, I don't think I actually agreed to anything. Never mind, I'm leaving. Bye! Yup, just a little bit of effort and she'll really be the whole package. <laughs> I mean, Hilda, get out of that one. <laughs> Real masterfully. <laughs> and he. Ugh. Hello, Hilda. What are you doing? Organizing our gear? <laughs> what does it look like? I know what it looks like. It just doesn't seem believable. <laughs> but you working, I mean. You never do that. <laughs> True. Well, the person who's supposed to be doing it is hurt, so I agreed to pitch in and help out. But you always have others do your work for you. Okay, slow down, pal. It's not like I run around asking people to take on work for me. I just let them do it if they want to. No matter the particulars of the process, the outcome is the same. Regardless, it's admirable of you to take the place of an injured comrade without begrudging them. Oh, and to be clear, I'm not here to help. I'm taking a well-earned break right now. Plus, you seem to have a handle on things yourself. <laughs> of course they're not helping. Of course. I haven't even...
even asked you to help yet. Not out loud, no, but your eyes tell a different tale. Actually, I was thinking that if you had time for chit-chat, you had time to lend me a hand or two. But even I'm not enough of a jerk to ask a guy for help when he's on a break. I am delighted you grasp the importance of rest. There are many out there who say the most unthinkable things on the subject. Oh, Linhart, you're on break? Perfect. Then you can help me with this awful whatever that I'm doing. Do they even understand the concept of downtime? Or is every waking moment merely a chance to increase their own productivity? Break time is for breaks. <laughs> you're speaking my language on that one. Although, to be fair, your life seems to be one permanent break. So I see why somebody might say that to you. Indeed. Sometimes they even claim I sleep too much, which is completely different from taking a break. Wait! How is sleeping not a break? Alas, how unfortunate. It appears you and I will not be able to reach common ground on this matter. Laying it on a bit thick, aren't you? That reminds me of something. Did I not see the injured comrade responsible for this storehouse hauling things at the goods depot this very morning? Sure did. He said he wanted to help me out, so I asked him to take over. At which point he promptly threw out his back and left this particular task to you. Yes, well, I now understand your reason for working. And with that, good night. Ugh, that guy really bugs me sometimes. It's like he thinks he's better than me or something. <laughs> it is it is a competition between the slackers. I think I think Leonard has like a little bit of a lead, but in the A support, Hilda's probably gonna catch up. And um Yeah. She's gonna beat him in slacking off. <laughs> Good evening, Marianne. What are you up to? Um I found this in the mess hall. Oh! That's... It was at your seat, so I wondered if it maybe belonged to you, or if... Actually, it is mine. Thank you. It's not a very good painting, is it? I mean, the use of color and composition are all wrong. Oh, I think it's wonderful. The Pegasus looks as though she's about to take flight at any moment. You really think so? Well, that's good to hear. Um... So, did you paint this, Ignatz? What? I, um... <laughs> I guess you found me out. The breaststrokes are soft, yet it has a true sense of movement. I think it's beautiful. Well, I was hoping to combine the Pegasi's gentle nature and powerful wings in a single image. This was more of a test, to see what poses and focal points would be most effective for... Oh, I'm sorry. I got a bit carried away there. <laughs> it's all right. Though I honestly had no idea you like Pegasi so much. They don't allow men to ride them, so I don't tend to hear too much praise for them. <laughs> so this is their excuse why we don't have male Pegasus riders. I see how it is. But they're so kind and so powerful when they fly. They truly are the most magnificent creatures. You seem to like them just as much as I do, Marianne. I've never seen you smile like this before. Oh, uh, I... Uh, I wasn't, uh... Don't worry. I'm just as bashful about it as you are. Uh, say, here's an idea. Would you mind if I watched you spend some time with a Pegasus? I, I promise to keep a good distance so as not to put it in too much of a sour mood. I certainly don't mind, but why? Well... If I ever want to paint one that I'm happy with, I need to observe it up close. Or as close as it will let me get, at any rate. Oh, what a wonderful idea! To be honest, I'd resign myself to the idea that a male painter could never do one justice. But hearing your kind words has given me the courage to try my hand at it again. So, thank you for that. I'm happy to help. Truly, I am. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't believe this is this is the excuse Pegasus uh, Pegasi just hate like men. That's why we don't have like male Pegasus riders really. Like what did they do to the Pegasi in like Fire Emblem Fates then? Like we had like the first male like Pegasus unit in that game, 
and it didn't matter. But but now they're like a sexist again for no reason. Man. Ah, the simple joys of a refreshing morning's exercise. Also, I'm only very pissed about that because I would have loved <laughs> to make Hubert like a Pegasus unit. But no, I can't. Ah. Oh, hey Lawrence. Kinda early for you, isn't it? What are you doing here? In truth, I was waiting for you, Leone. I merely decided to fit in a spot of training in the meanwhile. For me? There's something I was hoping to speak to you about. Do you recall our last conversation here? You said the day may come that more commoners begin to make their own choices, begin to live without relying on the nobility. Sure, I remember. What about it? Well, your words were quite shocking to me. I've spent no small amount of time turning them over in my mind since. If you speak true, I wonder how I, as a noble, should proceed. Huh. And? You reach any grand conclusions? Well, it is an ironclad rule of the nobility that the commoners living on our land fall under our protection. And yet, some still slip through our fingers. That is simply the state of things in today's world. In a way, you are one of them. Though you did choose this path of your own accord. Hold on. Did you really have to put it like that? I didn't slip through anyone's fingers. I jumped out all on my own. Well, yes, I suppose you did. My apologies. In truth, I find it exceedingly difficult to stand in the shoes of the everyman while also pushing matters forward as a noble. But if I'm unable to do exactly that, I have no hope of preserving the stability of my territory. As such, I am looking to bring an exceptional commoner into the ranks at House Gloucester to act as my advisor. That's a surprise. I thought there was supposed to be some huge boundary between nobles and their people. I assure you, such a boundary still exists. But I've come to realize something of late. As we proceed into the uncertain future, more and more common folk will begin to break free of their defined roles. Such an era will be upon us before long. Your actions are proof enough of that. Whoa, slow down there. I don't think I'm some kind of great trailblazer or anything. <laughs> I've simply interpreted the meaning behind your words. I thank you for leading me to this realization. Yeah, still not seeing it. I don't need your thanks. <laughs> uh, Leone, I had this idea with your story in mind. As for the commoner I would invite to House Gloucester, the proposal I mentioned earlier, how would you like to fill that role? I appreciate the invite, really. And I know it's supposed to be this huge honor, but there's other things I want to do in life. My dream is to become a mercenary just like the captain, and I'm already on the road to making that happen. I can't abandon that. I won't. Very well. I suppose I would not want to stand in the way of your dreams. In that case, I pray you succeed in your endeavors. But I'll be here should you ever change your mind. Good to know I have a backup. Thanks, Lawrence. Imagine Lawrence being the backup. Man. Also, uh, finally host. The man who this episode was dedicated ah, to. But fresh air. Time to get out of here and shake things up. But yeah, we won't be doing that, so that's a rip. Sneaking off in the dead of night again, Balthus? Is it too much to ask that you not break every rule in the book? Yeah, hey, Holst. Sure is a pleasant evening for a little stroll, yeah? <sighs> you can't honestly believe I'd fall for that. You know I'm going to have to write you up for this. You have to do what you have to do, I guess. Or you could just come with me. What do you say? If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to help you. Oh, very well. I'll join you. Thought so. An upstanding guy like you would never... Hold on, back up a sec. You're actually coming? You? That's right, Balthus. On one condition. I decide where we're going tonight. Fine by me. But what's your game here? You've never been one for bending the rules. Make no mistake, I went through the proper channels to get leave to go off base tonight. For the both of us, actually. Oh, okay. Wait, for me too? What is he planning? Alright, your turn to share, pal. 
Hard as it is to believe, there are only so many tales about the storied King of Grappling, and you've heard them all, twice. Very well. The truth is, Balthus, I'm gravely worried about Hilda. Oh yeah? What's been going on? Her behavior has been peculiar as of late. She seemed fine when I ran into her today. You sure you're not just imagining things? No, something is off. I'm certain of it. She's been giving me the cold shoulder. Have you tried talking to her? You could ask what her deal is. Of course I did. But whenever I try to broach the subject, she just walks away. I don't remember doing anything that would have made her so upset. What has happened to my darling little sister? Tell me, Balthus. Don't look at me. I'm as stumped as you. Maybe she's just at that age where she wants some independence. Though, she's still all, Balti do this and Balti do that with me, come to think of it. <laughs> Here I am, pouring my heart out, and you have the gall to brag about my sweet sister's attentions. Unbelievable. You really lose your cool when it comes to Hilda, you know that? Let it be known that on this day, the mighty host, Defender of Lester, revealed his true colors. I'd gladly give up my reputation if that's what it takes to get Hilda back to normal. I don't think that's gonna fix whatever's going on with her, pal. <laughs> that's a rip. I was like, just let's do something. But yeah, this actually did take the entire part, so that's a rip. That's a rip. And he, like, I can't even make a little excuse of like, oh yeah, well, we're at 25 minutes, just, let's just start it anyway. Uh, no. We had like... 30 or something so um yeah that's a that's a rip i'm uh, i did not expect to unlock that many support but i did so here we are and not a lot happened but we did have a lot of supports with claude and hilda but that yeah that was that was nice but anyway i don't even know what i'm what i'm supposed to say anymore as or what i'm talking about anymore so yeah, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed the part anyway, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!